Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and I'm here to read to you SCP 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. Starting off with SCP 30, I hope that you like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Starting off with SCP 36, the reincarnation pilgrimage of Yasuda, Karis Kuharin. Item number, SCP-36, Object Class, Safe, Special Containment Procedures. Once every year, a mobile task force is dispatched from a container and command O2 in expunged site. To site 22A to defend the runway and, air the runway and the airport located there. So the, civili uh, the civilian facility is cleared of all non-SCP personnel. By 04 hours of September 23rd, and none are allowed to return until sunrise the next day. On October 1st, all civilians must be evacuated again before sunrise and will not be allowed on Site 22A until the return of the pilgrimage flight. Pilgrims in transit from the arrival flight awaiting departure on the pilgrim flight may only be cross-examined by researchers with level 3 security, a level clearance, or higher. Description SCP-36 includes the location, Site 22A, a small airport in the Mosul region of northern Iraq, and Site 22B, the designation and of hazardous boarding this at Site 22A. The key components of SP E36 are the arrival flight, a passenger plane that varies in make and model from year to year, that arrives shortly before dawn on September 23rd. It appears on radar about 30 to 40 kilometers away from Site 22A. When it lands, pilgrims exit the plane and enter the terminal. No crew have ever left the plane. Observations have only revealed a mass pilot and co pilot. The plane leaves quickly after Pilgrim's exit and does not wait for clearance for takeoff, nor does it identify itself upon approach for landing. The Pilgrims, people of Yazid, a fate that exit the arrival plane, who are said to be undergoing the Karis Uhuran. Each year they are examined and identified as various people of the Yazid faith that have died during the previous year. This is done through who participates gets photo ideas, specific knowledge and questions, and when possible, fingerprinting. Most have been known to be friendly and amicable, though most are reluctant to give details about the Karis Garn. In the past, all have shown to be unable to recognize family friends or been able to remember any information beyond what short-term memory would normally allow. In the late afternoon of September 23rd, most pilgrims begin to emphasize how important it is that their pilgrimage must begin. At that time, they fall onto the pilgrimage flight plane and depart, never to be seen again. The pilgrimage flight, a passenger plane and provided by SV personnel for the transport of the pilgrims, it is manned by a crew of trained Yazidi, the holy men. The crew are typically never able to elaborate upon and details of the pilgrimage or what the Icarus O'Horan actually is. SP equipment on board function and optimally, but record data will only slightly increase our understanding of the pilgrimage each year. Now the flight is gone for seven days, the crew and record data are only able to account for a few hours. Days are missing from time recording equipment and cameras, so nothing abnormal is ever observed. The plane disappears from radar and visual contact is lost about 50 to 60 kilometers away from Site 22A until it returns about sunrise on October 1st. Site 22B, the destination of the pilgrimage plane, it is a, a small airport consisting of a, a runway and single building located at coordinates expunged. It has only been observed by pilgrimage crew and cameras on the plane. It does not appear on satellite images and attempts to reach it on foot have failed. 
months with disastrous results. Cameras have trouble focusing on the area as the heat from the ground usually causes a mirage-like visual effect on all objects within a few dozen meters from underbelt of land and what looked like an ancient statue. Wait. Oh. I completely skipped line. On all objects more than a few dozen meters from the plane, a flyover with an SV re reconnaissance plane several weeks before the program revealed underbelt land and would look like an ancient sun statue. In the 1990s, SV Mobile Task Force Sigma 4 attempted to reach Site 22 UB during the time of the pilgrimage. Upon the approach, communication was lost and Task Force was never heard from again. No other exploration attempts are advised during the seven day pilgrimage. Originally, the Kurdish speaking ASD people around Mosul secretly performed the pilgrimage themselves. Members from the east were escorted by mass armed guards on coming back into the care of Yazdi holy men. It has been explained that this holy that the holy men would take the program west to their land of the dead, where the pilgrims would wait to be reborn back into the Yazdi people. The Kurdish Garan, Larry Kurdish for changing garments, is used to describe the brief the belief of reincarnation that lesser souls of the Yazdi undergo. While this actual pilgrimage was done in secret, a simple Alex pilgrimage and Karis Garan are formed every year at this time by other Yazdi. During the 1960s, land acquisition of Kurds and Muslims, um, attacks by, Kur by Turks, and printed logs by the Islamic Iraqi government restricted the movement and customs of the Yazdi. During that time, the foundation stepped in and offered aid in the way of an advantageous closet grand SV flames unreasonable unrestricted as does to ever facilities in the area. Almost immediately, mysterious planes carrying programs from the east began landing at the local airport, an elusive uh, airport at the destination appeared as well. SCP-37, Dwarf Star Item Number, SCP-37, Object Class, Euclid Special Criterion Procedure SCP-37 is magnetically contained in a subterranean complex known as Site-22. Object site, a spectral signature, and temperature are constantly monitored both on-site and remotely from Site-98. The primary antenna chamber is lined with heat-conducting, radiation-resistant, nano-PEV polymer tiles and evacuated of any atmosphere. Heat from the object is radiated into the surrounding rock. Should enclosure integrity become compromised, the emergency system will generate a low power or argon plasma as shield. This is projected to provide a minimum of four hours for on site engineers to effect necessary repairs before the object reaches containment. Any contingencies that solar evolution proceeds ahead of projection and a nova event is imminent, or if containment failure is otherwise unavoidable, any remaining project staff are authorized to initiate the Pukutak. Protocol. Description. SCP-37 appears to be a star approximately 5 centimeters in diameter, with a luminosity of about 1 to the power of 1012. I don't know what that means times that of our star and a surface temperature of about 5,000 in Kelvin, determined by UBVRI analysis. The origin of SCP-37 is unknown, however analysis suggests that it shares many properties in common with the typical main sequence star, other than its anomalously small size. It is theorized to have entered the Earth's magnetic sphere via the North, via the North Magnetic Pole. The object was discovered in 19 blank above the Beaufort 
All right, C at approximately the North Red Egg Portal. Well, it takes a letter of Egg Day. It appears was reported by Canadian and forces station alert, followed by an extremely bright object descending towards the ocean from the sky. The SCP's guardians respond and discover the object ripping an erratic trajectory about 200 meters above the surface of the water. Once containment procedures were devised, it was transported to Site-32 for study. Containment and transport of SP-35 have been achieved by use of powerful electromagnets to which the artifact aligns itself according to its own magnetic field. The primary challenge to containment thus far has been proven its powerful electromagnetic emissions, which are intense enough to be easily seen by the naked eye from high Earth orbit. Its current enclosure is located deep underground to prevent the detection and to facilitate radioactive cooling into the surrounding bedrock. In effect, the entire facility and, and the surrounding volume of the Earth's crust act as a massive heat sink. And then the MA. Over the past blank years of study, the star has undergone a shift in emitted EM and radiation, suggesting that it is undergoing stellar ed evolution at a vastly accelerated rate. If standard solar models hold, hold up, this will soon result in an increase its radius by a factor of 100 to 300 times. And a con Uncommitted increase in radiated energy. Energy containment percentages are being studied in, in for that eventuality. Further progression of the star's life cycle would likely terminate in a stellar nova, which is, is estimated to have a yield of blank. Exploration extrapolations predict this to occur in blank. Research is underway to for a method to arrest its development or to transport SP-37 a safe distance from the planet before it occurs. Putak Protocol Sent August 5th, 1977 to 05 Council from Dr. Enos Subject SP-37 Emergency Neutralization Research Sirs and madams and uh, and madades and all creatures that uh, exist. The agents embedded within with the US as DOD have managed to alter the project requirement for the NASA orbiter program. The vehicle will be now designed with enough space to accommodate a SCP-37 and a and a temporary container apparatus in order to facilitate transport off planet. However, I continue to have reservations. Modern rocket technology simply is not reliable enough for the needs of this project. A single mistake can lead to a launch failure and subsequent loss of containment. Possibly catastrophic. Even a successful launch would have to be would have to proceed perfectly. Lest the result be visible to observatories and instruments and possibly the naked eye around the world. There are numerous as artifacts can provide foundation which, which might allow us to transport SCP-37 safely and cost-effectively to an adjacent dimension, universe, or esoteric domain. SCP blank in particular might prove especially convenient for this purpose considering the, the outcomes of recent attempts to explore and difficulties of unknown. Neutralization of SCP-37 might thus serve the yeah, the purpose of reducing or removing the threat posed by that anomaly as well. I implore you to reconsider the Putak proposal submitted in light of these concerns. It's kind of cool that we just that they just have a star in the Earth's crust, but that sounds like a horrible idea. And right now we're going on to SV thirty-eight, the Everything Tree. Item number SCP-38. Object class safe. Special containment procedures. 
As we are yet to be wired twice per day via overhead emitter. Should the emitter break for any reason, attention with water SV38 by hand until it's been fixed. Lighting is provided by computer controlled lighting array. Attends watering SV38 by hand and maintenance personnel fixing a emitter or light lighting should wear hazmat suits to prevent accidental cloning. Description SV38 was found on an abandoned farm in blank New York in 19 blank. It was at first thought to be a common apple tree. However, upon closer inspection, it became apparent that SV38 was growing things other than apples, and in fact, other than fruit. Other than fruit, SV38 has the ability to clone any object that touches its bark. I will just begin growing about instantaneously and reach matured maturity within a matter of minutes. A weight limit of uh, 90.9 kilograms per object has been previously recorded. Objects that SCP-38 has thus far included include apples, oranges, watermelons, eggplants, snack foods, you know, number one, televisions, toasters, laptops, keys, see them number two, chairs, wines, CDs, see them number three, cats, dogs, and people. <sighs> Human and animal cloning through SV38 is not recommended as they appear to age quickly. The majority of these clones live on average two weeks. After thorough examination of the deceased clones, it has been determined that they had begun to ferment before death. Object is currently held on Site-23, and there are currently no plans to move it. Uh, let them M1. Dr. Klein has requested that personnel could discontinue the use the cloning of items from the vending machines. See document 30, 338-1. Addendum number 2. Dr. Klein has re requested that personnel discontinue the use the cloning of uh, personal items. See document 338-1. Do Addendum 3. Dr. Klein has requested that personnel discontinue the, the cloning of movies and music. See document 338-1. Addendum 4. Dr. Klein has requested that personnel discontinue the cloning of cans of Miller, Budweiser, and Foster's. Dr. Klein has uh, furthermore Express customary disapproval of the, of the quality of such cloned items. See document 338-1 and B. Document 338-1. I would like to remind all per hang on. <clears throat> I would like to remind all personnel that SP38 is not I repeat not a toy. It should not be used for cloning car keys, movies, music, or absolute vending machines. If this this behavior continues, I will be forced to limit access to SP38. Dr. Klein. Document 338-2. It has been known that SCP-38 is able to clone SCP-500. However, such pills only work 30% of the time, with chance of successful healing dropping as time since clone owned increases. In 60% of the cases where the infection is permanent, symptoms of infection remain, though further infection is neutralized. SCP-38 a partial testing log. Select experiments only. For full tests, records, and reports, contact affiliated researchers for authorization. Date November 8th, unknown on the year. Confirmation of mass limit. Investigations consequences of exceeding a limit. Summary of test results 400 pounds steel ingot made contact with the outer park of SP 38. Chamber of AKS a precaution, 
Fun and get grow at typical speed, but growth halted abruptly short of completion. Examination of the, the end of the aborted Ed meal revealed a rough texture superficially resembling a miniature scale tree bark. I'm detached from SV38 as typical and was subsequently found to weigh in 90.91 kilograms, or almost precisely 200 pounds. Date November 8. Intent Investigation into the duplication of non biological or animate matter. Summary of test results SV173, deemed that suitable, or test subject because of its lack of veritable or life process as is introduced into the containment procedure by classic personnel. Tang that make with outer arc of SV38 and SV173 return immediately to containment. SV173, a fast male, began development at typical speed, getting a point of contact. As consistent with previous results, growth halted at the 200 pound threshold. In this case, during development after replication of the head, right arm, and partial upper torso. Class C test subject was ordered to break eye contact with clone. When the test subject eventually blinked, no movement was observed in cloned material. Extinguishing and reestablishing in a containment and chamber light supply uh, revealed an, a, no apparent reaction from cloned material. Experiments concluded during chamber lights of light during storage of cloned question of SV-173, it was observed that the partial fast meal was in fact making violent gestures at a dramatically slower rate. Movement was shown to continue regardless of state of observation. Now we're going on to SCP-39, also known as Monkey Brain. <sighs> Item number 39. Containment in class is Euclid. Disruption class is Blom. Risk class is Caution. Special containment procedures. Living SCP-839 instances are to be contained in Site 77's Wilderness Observation in Chamber 2B. The interior and exterior of WOC 2B must be monitored by Two security cards at all times. WLC E2 is being inspected weekly for sabotage and contraband. Let's see what they mean by this. Oh, it's an incident. Well, this is a description of the place. Hmm. I guess we'll learn what the incident was about later on. The seized instance is our in refrigerated storage and may be accessed for study upon request. SV39 and A is that expunged. SV39 and cons. Description SV39 consists of 23 Robuscus monkeys, which have been subject to radical anatomical changes. These alterations are summarized below. Eyes have been removed, new bone growth has filled eye sockets, no remnants of eyelids or eyebrows has remained, only smooth skin. Extreme alterations to the mouth or opening is no longer present. No remnants of 
Leaves remain only for the skin. Jawbone has, has been fused in place by new bone growth along the joints. Teeth, tongue, gums, and palate are absent, having been replaced by a large deposit of adipose tissue. Removal of digestive system, esophagus, stomach, gallbladder, intestines, and bladder have all been replaced with adipose tissue with formations of similar shape and volume. Anal orifice has been sealed by new skin growth, leaving no remnants of the anus. It is not clear how SV and SV39 essence obtain nutrition and explosive waste or survive without doing so. Enhancements of odd or tactile and of auditory systems. Both absolute and different in results are significantly lower than those of the baseline species. These enhancements allow SV39 to effect actively navigate their environment despite lack of sight. Instances have been observed tapping on objects when navigating unfamiliar surroundings. This behavior has been theorized to be a form of rudimentary echolocation, but this is yet to be proven. Until intelligence enhancements, SV30 in that score is consistently higher on all provided cognitive tests than their known anomalous equivalents. SCP-39 are capable of reproduction. At the time of writing, five instances of SCP-39 have been born since containment. SCP-39 show a very close bond among their species, with newborns often being cared for by, by all capable adults. New instances are born with the same anatomic anomalies as their parents. Despite this, testing has not identified any genetic divergence from baseline species of SCP-39 instances. SV39 communicate via touch in a complex series of nasal vocalizations, many of which have not been observed in non anomalous is Nicillus Eslovaitis. Original instances have also possessed as a rudimentary understanding of spoken English. The knowledge is not passed on to newborns, but they do naturally learn some English from exposure to foundation personnel. Instances of SV39 have demonstrated the ability to operate mechanical tools and to perform various complex tasks primarily related to automobile construction and maintenance. The this knowledge does not appear to be innate, as no newborn instances do not possess it. Addendum 39.1 Recovery Log SV39 were recovered in 1998 when Foundation created a Prometheus Labs facility approximately 25 kilometers north-northwest of Blank, Nevada. The facility has was found to have been uh, an abandoned an unknown amount of time prior to Prometheus Labs' collapse. Recovered objects of notes included two automobiles abandoned the parking lot outside, a third automobile partially disassembled in the cargo bay, an assortment of power tools, spare parts, paints, and other auto maintenance implements. An assortment of veterinary and anesthetic and surgical implements and data expunged located in an offering room. No. 20 small cages, presumably 44 hours of containing SV39, all cages were empty and partially dismantled with the doors removed. Two larger cases, like, likewise empty and dismantled, containing chimpanzee here, air and feces. The frozen and remained end of a dissected SP39 instance which lacked a nose or nasal passage in addition to the typical anomalies. The remains of three adult males identified via dental analysis as Alan Blank, Dingen Blank, and Cole Blank. All three individuals had, had been killed by, by severe blunt trauma and remain in pre and post mortem bite. Like marks corresponding to a pansy dentition. The personal journal of Cole of Blank season of two. 18 instances of SCP 39, SCP 39A. Addendum SCP 392. Some entries appear to uh, notate the early pro 
prototyping stage of SCP-39 development. These entries are reproduced below with portions relevant to SCP-39 excise for brevity. O open document and 039. This is probably unnecessary since they can keep track of all the scientific stuff, but I need something to do. Dear Diary, I should have bought more books to read. No scientific notes were recovered from this facility. Well, we got the monkeys today. Not the monkeys are wild, mind you. These are freaking proboscis monkeys. I asked that. Uh, I have one guy, I what he was thinking when he got uh, uh, these things, and he just shrugged, said, It didn't specify what kind of monkeys we wanted. What kind of weird, oh, here's monkey. And thinks, yeah, I'll get the fat one and with big noses. We wanted and it Reese's map echoes, just like literally every other research facility on the planet. Now we have to refit everything for 20 monkeys that are twice as big as we expected. Or else, sixty men take cages that are, are too small. I wonder how to how he got these things, but I'm kind of afraid to ask. This is an actor, but I never heard of him. Maybe in, he's in German movies or something. Something with a name, him like that. Imagine him having his eyes and was was like ugly, sick as your side job. What a weirdo. Including the deceased entrance, only 19 in, in of SC, in, instances of SC-39 were recovered from the facility. The whereabouts out of the missing 20th it, it instance are known as of 1999. The 20th instance was discovered in SCP-1328, living in an otherwise abandoned house belonging to the Red Actors Troop. The monkeys are doing fine, passing all the tests way better than they did, than they could, and when they could see. Damon says it's probably because they can remember it better, but I still think, think at least some of it has to do with not being distracted. I know I think better with my eyes closed. Took the nose off of one of the monkeys today to see what would happen. I just figured it would suffocate, but it didn't. Guess it gets its air from the same place as its food now? Makes me wonder just how much we could take out. If it's not breathing, does it really need a heart? That's about the only internal organ it's got left at this point. Pulling the heart will only improve the intelligence any though, so there'd be no point. Just curious. The one with no nose isn't moving anymore. We thought he was dead at first, so we checked for a pulse. Poor guy must be depressed. I'd be pretty unhappy too, I guess, if I couldn't see or talk to any of my friends, but I could still hear them around me. If he doesn't shape up soon, we'll also dissect him, see if we can figure out what happened. We're gonna leave the noses on the rest of them so this doesn't happen again. Called Werner, or some of chimps. I made sure he knew exactly what and why I was talking about, so he won't, won't show up with a freaking and baboon or something. I dissected the nose one, the noseless one today. Couldn't find anything obviously weird. Grin was still intact and everything. So, oh well. Damon said that the problem might be specific to this species, since those are so important for, to their social structure. I don't know about that, since I figured the eyes and mouth were pretty damn important too, but we. 
We won't know for sure until we try it on different species. Werner brought out us two chimps, both males. They're bigger than I expected. Not that uh, now we're done with the monkeys, we're handing them over to Alan. He's gonna try to teach them some tricks to impress potential donors. Alan says the monkeys are learning quick. I question the wisdom of teaching monkeys to use power tools, but Alan says they don't seem interested in getting up to a mischief or monkey business <laughs> anymore. Must be the procedure. Decided so to start with the nose instead this time. See if that monkey really freaked out because it couldn't communicate or because Santa is somehow the pen on the nose or some stuff. But I'm sure I've tested that on the monkeys. We were too busy trying to get out of feeding them to be be properly scientific about it. I wish our grant had been denied. Then we have enough money for some trial and error. We won't have to rely on some actor for our test subjects. Yeah, I like the chimps. The monkeys were alright because they're so funny looking, but the chimps are a little too much like hairy people for me. It feels like they're actually seeing me when they look. If that makes any sense. Doesn't help that I, I know they're, s they're smarter now. Yeah, I don't think they like me either. Can't wait till oh, we take their eyes tomorrow. And other news. Alan got actually got the monkeys to change inch the tires on his car. It looked funny doing it. Like a furry little pit crew. These must be the smartest monkeys on the planet by now. And Alan says they're still learning. The monkeys are basically geniuses at this point. Alan had them wait. Axe's car, do an oil change, and some other car stuff that I don't understand. Only that would convince the guy as upstairs to reconsider our grant. Maybe give us what we need to move on to Cuban Expert Imitation. If that doesn't work, we might at least be able to sell these monkeys to MC and D or someday as a cheaper Q alternative to real automatic mechanics. Why did the chimps try to freaking bite me today? I'm not uh, uh, going back in there until we take their uh, mouths. Those tricks can start for all I care. Damon can handle it. He so well doesn't want to take the mouths yet since those are their last facial features and he's afraid the same thing that happened to the monkey without a nose will happen to them. Gawkoff from Werner today said he had one more ape for us. I asked him what he was talking about but he just laughed, said he'd be here tomorrow and hung up. Doesn't he know we're already struggling? We don't have space for another dang monkey, much less food. Addendum 39.3, information pertaining to SCP-39-A. Special Containing Procedures, SCP-39-A is held in a standard human containment chamber adjusted to accommodate its blindness. Description: SCP-39-A is an adult human male named Jacob. Via the same process that created SCP-39, SCP-39-A's eyes, nose, and mouth and associated organisms have been removed. It has if experienced similar enhancements to his intelligence and remaining senses, as well as other psychological alterations. The following excerpts from Cole's journal relate to SP-39A. It's a human. The ape Warner was talking about. It's a freaking person. A guy named Jake. Some crackhead he scraped off, off the street. Probably just promised him a bunch of, bunch of stuff to lure him into that creepy red van where he drives and it dumped him on us. 
Uh, you knew, oh, our eventual goal here is to boost human intelligence. We're not ready for human experimentation at this stage. Damon disagrees. This is a big opportunity. If we can all out of a successful human and prototype, then we're bound to get at our grand unapproved, right? He's right, but that doesn't change the fact that this is a whole new level of illegal, not to mention dangerous. Not sure I want to do it just yet. Not without approval from upstairs. Freaking Damien. Last night, that a jerk went behind my de my back and operated on jet. Ache. Took his, his whole dang face off all at once. Jake's lucky he didn't drop up, up dead right there from the shock. He still hasn't woken up yet, so it might still happen. I told Damien, I told Damien, I'll feed him to the freaking chips if he does this again. I am not prepared to dispose of a body. Shouldn't be hard out here in the middle of this dang desert, but still. Jake woke up today, already moving around and everything. It's kind of creepy how fast he recovered, and how calm he is about the whole thing. I guess he knew what he signed up for, but you'd think a guy would be at least a little weirded out when he wakes up without a face. There's something weird. Jake says he isn't craving in drugs anymore. He still had some on him and when he got here, track or meth or I don't know what. But he wants us to get rid of it. According to him, he don't really be wanting to fix for it right now, but he hasn't felt the urge since the operation. I don't know how taking his face off cured his addiction. It enhances intelligence, yeah, but it shouldn't alter your brain and chemistry like that. Damon's as stumped as me. He's been knee deep in, in that at old old book that gave him the, his crazy idea in the first place, trying to figure it out. I would offer to take a look at it, but I don't speak Latin. No books back to the description was or re recovered from the facility. Jake wanted to see the monkeys today, so despite my better judgment, we took him to Alan. He was training them to build a car engine, and they were doing a great job. Believe it or not, but they could. Oh, somebody new was in the room. I guess I smelled him. A couple of them came over, and he squatted down to pet them. Damien warned him that the monkeys aren't usually very friendly, but they didn't seem to mind. We just touched his face, so I snored him a lot. Seemed kind of excited. I guess because they found a human who's like them. The whole thing was really weird. Daddy wants to see the shrimps, but I said no. We can't afford to let our only human test subject get mauled to death. Damien does think we can probably take their mouths off though, since Jake didn't go oh nuts like, like the monkey. But I guess we'll do that tomorrow, unless something weird happens with Jake. Damon doesn't want to do the trip until after they meet it, Jake. Says he wants to see if they make any unusual vocalizations. I don't know what he expects to see, but he says that after the way the monkeys acted yesterday, it might be worth checking out. I said it's still too dangerous, but then you got that. I got kind of crappy about it and said chimps only act aggressive on me because I don't like them. Said I didn't have to come if I didn't want to, so I won't. I hope they throw oh oh crap at him. Well, this is creepy. Damien swears that Jake and the chimps actually communicated. They did the same face touching thing as monkeys, and then they were cooting and stuff. And he was nodding like he understood. Jake says he let us know what they are talking about. And I'm not sure what to th think. It sounds crazy, but then again, so is trusting a guy with no face. I'm starting to think we're in over our heads here. Knew we should have waited for or that grant to start human testing. I wish freaking Wormer hadn't brought us this guy. Oh, one more thing. Aldo was having the monkeys repaint his car. So I think he just did this as an excuse to get his car saved off for free. 
Rosalind sunk off with a couple of tools. It took a while to notice as he was gone, but me and Alan interacted the little guy pre down pretty easily. Looking around the out, out outside the chip pen. Not sure where he left the tools, but we can look for them tomorrow. When MTF Epsilon 6 entered the facility, they discovered SCP 39A living in what was presumed its quarters, sharing a living space with several instances of SCP 39. Additional interactions were complicated by SCP-839-A's inability to speak. Once communication and writing was established, it willingly entered custody. Addendum 39-4 Interviews The following is an interview of SCP-39-A conducted by researcher Leroy Carlson. It communicated its answers by typing on a computer. Begin log. Good morning, SV39A. SV39A waves at researcher Carlson. I'm researcher Leroy Carlson. At SV39A offers Carlson offers researcher Carlson a handshake, which he accepts. I'd like to ask you a few questions about what happened at the Prometheus Labs facility. SV39A nods. First, how do you know O oh, Warner or Gillespie? He picked me up, Reno, pulled up beside me on the street in a red van. That's why I wanted to become human. I asked him what the hell he was talking about, and he told me there were some guys out in the desert somewhere who could fix me. Make it so I never need food or water ever again. Make me smarter, too. Sounds too good to be true, like you said. But I figured I didn't have much to lose. Besides, he had drugs, so I got in that creep e e van and with him, and he took me to that place in the desert. Do you know anything else about him? SV-39 A shake shakes his head. We didn't exactly have a heart to heart. Did he say why he was interested in this project? Nope, just that he was helping those guys to lap at find test subjects. I see. Is there anything else you know about him? He said he was an actor. Oh, and the van had Florida plates. Have you had any contact with Gillespie since he brought you into the facility? Nope. Are you sure? There seems to be some objects missing from the laboratory and two chimpanzees. I'm sure. The chips left on their own after they killed those guys. Figured out how to open the door. Ran off, off into the desert. Probably died out there since they still need food and water. Then why didn't you leave the facility? Hey, just because I don't need food and water is me and I, I can't have a heat stroke. Didn't need to worry about finding food or anything so I decided to stick around. I figured someone would find me eventually. To bet it was you guys. Hmm. Do you know anything? Anything about any books or research notes that the scientists who are operating on you may have had? SCP shake its shakes his heads. Nope. Like I said, I was a sub I was a test subject. Interesting. While we're on the subject, how exactly did the chimpanzees is escape their cages? Beats me. Cole probably forgot to lock the cages or something. Hmm. Even smart people make mistakes, I suppose. Note: He's lying. I'm requesting the use of enhanced chemical interrogation techniques. Researcher Carlson. You don't believe me, do you? I'll ask the questions. Thanks. Will you? Or are you just going to sit there and write? I'll write as long as I want. Hmm. Fine, then take your time. It's not like I have anywhere else to be anyway. You're just going to put me back in my cell when we're done, right? Right. SV39 
and A removes his hands from the keyboard and leans back with them behind his head. Researcher Carlson finishes writing. Okay, SCP-39. And hey, just one more question. You really enjoy calling me that, don't you? Makes it easier to forget I'm a person. Are you able to communicate with the monkeys? What? I turn on where you covered in case that you may have been able to communicate with them and the other chimpanzees in some way. Hang on. Oh, no. That must be a cool journal. You know he's an idiot, right? Not to mention in a jerk. He didn't like me or the chimps. Are you saying that you can't communicate with S other SCP-39 instances? I mean, can you communicate with your dog? They're smart animals. Yes, but I can talk to my dog and he can see me. You and the monkeys can't do either of those things. SV-39A hesitates. I'd like to go back to my cell now. SV-39A crosses its arms. This interview is not over. SV-39A does not respond. You're not going to cooperate, are you? SV-39A shakes its head. Fine, but this isn't over. Researcher Carlson's request for chemical integration as pending ethics committee approval as SP39A's altered physiology, metabolism, and psychology makes the effects of Nessex and similar drugs on it difficult to predict. Below is, is a transcript of Researcher Carlson's second interview with SP39A, conducted the following day. Begin log. Hello again, SP39A. SV39A does not respond. I'd like to ask you some questions about, about the procedures that removed your face. SV39A nods slowly. First, how was it performed? What do you mean? Was it a surgical operation? A thumb magical ritual? Were you genetically modified? They didn't tell me the specifics, and I was out there in the operation. You didn't ask? It's not like I would have understood the science anyway. It just told me it makes me smarter and I wouldn't have to eat anymore. And that I got blind, but my hearing would get better so it wouldn't be so bad. And you agreed to this? You would have too. So I have to wonder what 978 is, but that is irrelevant right now. What makes you say that? SP39A thinks briefly. Rough estimate. How much money do you spend on food every month? Groceries, restaurants, everything. Uh, a couple hundred bucks? It varies. Now imagine that you still had those hundred bucks every month. That's more than a thousand a year. What would you buy with that? Something that you want but don't have right now because of your budget. Uh, well... I've been trying to complete my rare coin collection. 
Cool. So just think. If you didn't have to eat, you'd have all those rare coins. Well, yeah, but I like eating. Do you? Or is that just as your biological need to eat tricking your brain into enjoying something it doesn't really have a choice about? Out. Of course I like eating. I mean, maybe not always. When I go to a fancy restaurant or something, I do. Okay, fine. Let me put it, it, it like this. You want to lose some weight, right? What? Christopher Carlson looks at his body. Just guessing. Most of you people do. Us people? People who can afford to eat. Before I got my face off, I only got to eat it if I went to a homeless shelter or fish something out of the trash. But you have the opposite problem, don't you? Eating too much. Well, I suppose so. Now imagine if you never had to worry about that. If you didn't have to try and fail to exercise self-control when you reach for one more piece of cake or one more deep fried whatever, because you can't end to eat. But that doesn't matter. That, but that doesn't bother you because you don't want to anyway. Pretty soon after your operation, your body will naturally reach a healthy weight. But you can still build a muscle. Heck, I was skinny as a puzzle before I got over at my face. Now look at me. Uh, I think I'll stick with my diet. How about this then? How much time do you spend eating every day? Look, I just want to know more about the procedure. This isn't necessary. You want to know why I volunteered, didn't you? I'm trying to explain it to you. Or do you not utterly want to know? Fine, carry on. So how much time do you spend in eating? I don't know, maybe an hour total? And how much time do you spend cooking, shopping for food, driving back and forth to the place where you shop, bringing in the groceries, putting them away? Or when you go to a restaurant, how much time do you waste deciding where to go, driving out there, waiting for your table, waiting to order, waiting for the food, waiting for the check? Then after you eat, how much time do you spend and, and pooping every day? How much of your life is wasted sitting on a toilet, wiping your own on butt, smelling your own on feces like an animal? Do you have any idea how much of your short earth life is wasted fulfilling base biological needs? How much of the stuff you want to do with your life never gets done because you're too busy doing what you have to? <sighs> I understand that, but I like my face where it is. Well, maybe if you were in the shoes I was in, and you think differently from where I was, my face was a small price to pay. I don't guess it matters now, though, since I'm in a box. I'm sorry about that, but surely you can understand the kind of uproar that a man with no face would cause if we just let you wander around in public. SP39A hesitates for several seconds, and is hovering above the keyboard. Did you have any other questions? Or well, wondering if you've experienced any other or psychological changes. The monkeys show much higher cognitive performance than unaltered ones. And we want to know if you experience anything smarter. Definitely. It's a little more complicated than just being smarter, though. How so? Well, it's all about attention. I can hear better, but with the SP 39A gestures at the upper half of its face. But I also listen better, if that makes any sense, because I'm not distracted anymore. I never realized it before, but you probably don't either. I'm not sure anyone can if they still have, the, have a face. People are always distracted, think about a thousand different things, worrying about your job or lack of one in my case, try to figure out what are you going to have for dinner, or you when you're going to sleep, how you're going to get your next fix, whatever that is for you. But I don't have to deal with all that anymore. I can, so I can pay attention, really pay attention when I'm listening, and remember or all of it. And when I'm thinking, trying to solve a math problem or something, I can concentrate, really concentrate. It's like the difference between being sober and being drunk.
Speaking of which, the documents we found indicate that you were addicted to drugs before the operation. I was a crackhead before they took my face off, but I haven't craved it even a little bit since the, the operation. They need withdrawal. That's interesting to you, I imagine. Yes, it is. Do you know why this is the case? Not scientifically. Seemed like Damon and the other guys didn't expect that, but I do know. SV39A pauses is briefly. Intrinsically, spiritually, I can feel it, if that makes any sense. Can you explain this feeling? It's simple, really. It's like what I was talking about with the food. Not that my, now my face is gone and a whole bunch of my organs too. I don't know which ones exactly, but most of them, I'm cut off from that. From what? Urges, base instincts, the monkey brain. Before, my body craved things. Food, water, intercourse, drugs, booze. I could barely eat, think, really think the way I do now, but not anymore. When they remove my face, they remove the monkey. Un now it's just me in here. SCP-39 NA taps its forehead. Just a rational all human being in complete control of themselves. End log. Now we're going on to SCP-40. Evolution's Child. Huh. This is an odd one. Item number SCP-40, Object Class Anomalous Human. That's not usually a class. Containment Class Active, Hazard Rating Yellow. What version of the SCP is this? This is a huge break in format. Anyway. Standard Containment Policies. 2 person residential module, no o amenity restrictions. Access to site library, recreational facilities, cafeteria, and public areas under supervision. Dietary restriction, mild peanut allergy. Youth educational curriculum of enrollment. Doctors Avernathy, Logan, and Izawa. Buy a weekly fit psychological review. Dr. Avernathy. Schedule B experimentation plan. Special containment procedures. SCP 40A1A, 1C, and 1J have been approved to remain in containment chamber with SV 40 for purposes is of the subject's mental well being. Security Chef Special O Order 3925. All other entities is modified by SV40 during testing are to be disposed of after a study according to Saturn Biological Specimen Clearance Protocols. Outlined in document CDP Bio ON1. SCP40 is a human child capable of at will Manipulation of the physical characteristics of living organisms. Modified organisms are collectively referred to as SCP-41. Modifications are primarily ecosmetic, ranging from simple color and pattern and changes to more involved shifts in bodily form and structure. The creation of new specialized organisms is possible by PSV limit of SCP-40's ability and currently has a 66 value rate in testing. Modifications are limited to what would be physically impossible regardless of the probability of such a future naturally arising. For example, while SV-40 can grant an organism wings that does not naturally possess them, they will not permit the, the creature to fly without being under physical 
requirements. SV41 undergo behavior shift as part of the modification process, acting with extreme low loyalty to SV40 regardless of prior association. Oh yeah. I guess this is a weird like sheet of SV40. Date of birth, sometime in 2000. Subject claimed to be eight years old at the day of collection. Place of birth is unknown. Day of collection is 2008. Unknown date of when in 2008. Height, 111 centimeters. Weight, 20.7 kilograms. Hair, bright pink. Eyes, Green right eye, yellow left eye, with a black exclara in the left eye. Other notes. Rose in left eye, skin sensitive to burns and easily bruised. Hair is brittle and falls out easily. SV40 is a knowledge properties require a significant focus and time to enact and causes intense headaches and nausea when performed for more than a few minutes at a time. The effect becomes increasingly unreliable and accurate as all the modifications or more complex the changes are. SV40 is incapable of altering a microscopic organisms and has great a difficulty in altering plant life. Dead organic matter may also be used, but all mostly used in conjunction with a living organism. Instances of SV41 cannot be modified more than once, though it is currently unknown if this is a hard limit of SV40's properties or from a lack of mastery over them. You would think that by now, with them being around 22, probably, or 21, I don't know the date, um, that it would actually master their abilities. Anyway. SV40 is emotional states within acceptable boundaries for an individual of its age group, accounting for the effects of prolonged containment and apparent or, or separation. Subject's intelligence is slightly above average for its age group. Behavior is generally cooperative. SV40 acclimated quickly to containment and responded well to the initial orientation and socialization programs. SV40 responds to the name 40 and does not appear to have any other given or chosen personal name. Recovery is subject. 40 was taken into custody in 2008 as part of the raid on, on the keys to the, the Kingdom and Christian Charter School for Gifted Youth in Redacted, Colorado. The raid's primary objective being capture and execution of Blank, a former RCA operative who had previously worked alongside Foundation intermediaries as part of Project Black Book, Project Smell Adon and Operation Stargate from 1967 to 1971. Was successful, Blink was terminated on site and disposed of without incident. Of the 15 children and recovered from the e facility, 40 was the only one to demonstrate anomalous properties. The others were administered amnestics and placed in foundation of observed foster care. It was with the staff at the school revealed they were unaware of Blank's prior history or any connection with Foundation operatives. They were administered amnestics and put under a six month communications monitor. No relapses were recorded. See Operation Tatsurum After Action Report or Complete Event Record. Addendum 1 40 is currently allowed out custody of the following 41 instances. SV41A, symbiotic organism capable of changing size, shape, color, and texture in reaction to its environment. Some serves as other clothing, similar to a jacket or sweater, and absorbs nutrients from SV40's bloodstream. Subject has recovered alongside for subject was recovered alongside 40, and genetic testing reveals that the subject Airs the majority of its genetic makeup with the common household with the common house, house cat. SV41C 
spherical organism capable of flight by means of rubbery blades filled with lyrid and, and air gas mixture. Andy has 11, and lemons terminated in opposable digits and a complex respiratory system capable of, of replicating a wide variety of musical patterns. SV41J Quadrupedo organism covered in a thick coat out of pink and blue fur, and he has no eyes, a broad mouth with blunt teeth, and is capable of climbing up vertical surfaces. Occasionally used by SV40 as a means of transport. Item 2. The following is dated in 2008, shortly after SV40's initial containment and orientation sessions. Good morning, Forty. Good morning, Miss Abernathy. Sounds like you're getting over your cold. Mm-hmm. I'm glad. Can and I ask you a few questions before we start with today's lesson? Yeah. Can you tell me about your parents? Mr. Green said I don't have any. Can you tell me about Mr. Green then? He was nice, but he wasn't very good at talking. He would... What? What? Oh. Uh, Always talk like 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 this. But I wasn't there a lot of time. Most of the time, it was the nurses looking after us. And what did they, they do for you? They play games with us and teach us as things. And sometimes they would make us wear these dumb helmets and sit quiet for a long time. Sometimes they put a movie on for us if we behaved. But if we were or bad, they would lock us in our rooms. Can you tell me anything else? Hmm. They always served us peas for dinner, and I hate peas, so I gave mine to five, because she liked peas, but I think green beans are better. Addendum um, 3, 2009, SV40 successfully reanimated a, a deceased human test body during testing, using three specimens of a brown rat as the required living component. The resultant subject retained no memories of previous life and was judged to be the approximate mental capacity of a human toddler. SV40 was highly distressed by the event and refused further testing for the next three weeks. Whew. That was SCP 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe. And please ask me questions in the comments below. I'll see you all next time.